Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. We've got three new driver models in 2020. TaylorMade Sim, Maverick from Callaway, the Callaway Maverick Sub-Zero, and the Cobra Speed Zone. We're going to put them all to the test here. You're going to hit a bunch of tee shots. Uh, first of all, A, you know, what do you expect to see maybe? And then also kind of outline the test for us, the specs, the shaft, all that for us. I'm expecting, you know, typical distance out on my driver. I'm expecting obviously to hit it over 300 yards. Yeah. You know, these drivers 20, 20, I'm expecting them to be relatively forgiving. Um, and I'm, I'm always interested to pay attention to this dispersion because yeah. when I'm hitting a driver, I want to make sure that I am in the fairway. Because, you know, if I'm only hitting six or seven fairways around when I'm playing, I'm going to be chipping out sideways a lot. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure, I'm, I'm curious to see which one's flying the straightest. Absolutely. Yeah. So what do we got? You got your, this is your shaft, right, that you have in your gamer driver right now. Yep. So I'm playing the Graphite Design 280 BB6X. That's what I've been playing for about three or four years now. Um, this is our all fit system. So this way I can, I can change out the club heads. So I've got the TaylorMade um, Sim, got the Maverick Sub-Zero and the King Speed Zone. So I'll be sw switching out this particular shaft and putting exact same setting at nine degrees aloft. The shaft is 45 inches in length. This is going to be kind of a test of low spinning drivers um, for golfers in 2020 from TaylorMade, uh, Cobra, and Callaway. Uh, right before we get started here, just want to remind everybody that if you enjoy watching the video, this test, uh, and the content we provide, feel free to subscribe to our channel on Second Swing Golf. All right, you got the Maverick Sub-Zero, uh, Callaway invested more in their artificial intelligence. That's kind of the big, the big technology with Maverick is that you know almost all of it is engineered in some way, impacted by artificial intelligence. I know you've played the Epic Flash in the past, the Epic Flash Sub-Zero, and uh, you know I think you got a chance a little bit to hit, hit the Maverick. What do you think uh, we'll see here? Yeah, so I got a chance to hit it at Callaway. I haven't had a chance to see it track my numbers yet, so I'm excited to see it today. Yeah. Um, I really like the look of the, of the club in 2020, so I'm excited to see what the Maverick shows in numbers for sure. So, yeah. yeah. Every year, Callaway, when they release drivers, high expectations, and this artificial intelligence thing is very unique across the board because you're not seeing it from really anywhere, anywhere else in, in golf. Yep, so with the Maverick, I've got the weight up the front here. So essentially with the Maverick, I'm gonna have the weight at the front. With the Cobra Speed Zone, I'm gonna have the weight also up in the front. And then the TaylorMade Sim already is yeah. kind of up in the up in the front there right. with that one sliding track. So a comparison of low spinning options in 2020 for drivers here. Correct. catch that one. Yeah. yeah, three pretty good results there. Yeah, that one was a little bit of a miss hit, but sure. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't too far off. Well, yeah. and that's I mean, again, you know, that's that's a miss hit and you're hitting it 300 yards and you're in the fairway. That's true. That's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, well now let's uh let's get to the Cobra Speed Zone. Again with that weight and that kind of forward setting on the sole. All right, you got the Cobra Speed Zone. Uh, I know you got a chance also to hit that a little bit, and uh, I think you're pretty, you know, pleased by it. The results, you know, when you got test down at Cobra. I was very impressed with it. I really liked how this kind of face kind of wraps over the crown a little bit here. I think it's a really unique idea, and I think it just looks just makes the club much easier to square off at, at yeah. the back. Yeah. yeah, that milled face is also that's a unique thing for Cobra drivers that kind of CNC milled face. And now they've kind of expanded it to kind of into the, around the sole, but also on top on the crown there too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Interesting that you've had, I think, probably the last one, both with the Maverick Sub-Zero and the Speed Zone, the last one was kind of a little bit more spinny than the previous two with each club. But at the end of the day, those results are still great, though. Yeah, those two swings, I just let that face just a little bit. 
yeah. open coming sure. through. That's why it was just fading a little to the right. Maybe going just ever so slightly spinning a little bit more when, it, when yeah. the ball was fading. I mean, really, I mean, just again, this is just kind of a broad look at it. Very comparable uh, so far. And then we can add in the tailor-made sim here. Yeah, very comparable. Um, pretty much kind of about the same kind of distance for, yeah. for, for the most part here. It'd be interesting to see. Obviously, once we analyze all the data, see You're what right. the full speed numbers are like mm -hmm. and comparing them all too. So. All right, you got tailor-made sim. I know you've been really excited about just the way that club looks at a dress, right? Yeah, I've mentioned before, this is the best looking tailor-made driver that I have probably seen ever yeah. actually. I think it looks, you know, it just very appealing to the, to the eye. I love the, the whitish grayish kind of finish with regards to the black, the gray, the white, the blue, mm -hmm. everything. And you know, the pattern on top, it looks really, looks really cool to look down at, so. Yeah, presents confidence for sure. Yep, that's what old golfers need. Oh, well, that's three that, I mean, those are among your deepest tee shots. I think that spin stayed pretty low throughout uh, with the sim. Spin was very low with the spin. It was actually under 2,000 every single shot that yeah. I hit with it there too. So. Yeah, so that's going to be, the, that's the, pretty much the reason that you're hitting those a little bit farther maybe than the Maverick Sub-Zero yep. uh, and the speed zone so far. I would agree. Uh, so you've hit now three with each model. Is there, you know, maybe you have a preference in look and feel for those or, I mean, you have, I guess you had a couple a little bit out to the right with the tailor-made, but also was the farthest. So is there anything after three shots, you're going to hit three more with each one, but anything that you noticed so far? Yeah, tailor-made, I was just having a little bit harder time squaring the club face up, coming through yeah. a little bit. It was just a little more out to the right. Uh, we found with the other two, they were flying pretty straight, spinning a little bit more, but in the optimal amount of spin. So we're talking right. like around that 22, 2300 RPM yep. spin rate with them. So very good. Really like the look of that Colbert speed zone. I talked about that. Um, how the milling kind of wraps around the mm -hmm. face from the face over to the crown. And then, you know, when I got the chance to go to Cobra, I also really liked the look of the black, white kind of yeah. matte finish mm -hmm. with, with that model too. So I, if I was going to play Cobra, I almost kind of like the look of that one a little bit better right. than the yellow on the kind of glossy finish. Right. Um, and the Maverick, for me, I've obviously played a Callaway driver quite a few years, so I'm used to that look and I really you know, feel comfortable looking down at that yeah. club. So. Any matte driver really is kind of, you know, that'll catch my interest and that, that white and black, the matte black finish on top of that speed zone, uh, we got a chance to look at that down at Cobra and that was pretty cool. And that's something that I'll certainly be interested in here in 2020. But uh, yeah, let's, you know, let's hit, I guess, nine more tee shots here. All right, let's sounds Get back good. to the Cobra and the, and the Callaway. Yep. All right, back with, Maverick Sub-Zero, I mean, all three performed pretty well the first time around, but Maverick was, you know, obviously you're over 300 yards and you're just that little baby fade, a little bit right of center, but all three right in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, all very good. So let's see how they test these last three shots each. Felt good too. Oh yeah, that's a rocket. That was small. One five one smash. Yeah, that was really that, solid right there. That might be the best one. Oh, one that's for sure one of the best of the day in terms of. I mean straightness. There was no curve on that goal yeah, at all. That so, thing is yeah. almost dead straight. Yeah. So solid performance from the Maverick Sub Zero through six shots there. It's pretty good. Compared to um, the Epic Flash Sub Zero, which I played last year. This sounds a little bit softer than okay. the Epic Flash, so it's not quite as loud as the Epic Flash was. Okay. I know a few people had mentioned that that Callaway driver was fairly loud, so this yeah. is muted a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know because I know, like, like you said, that was one of the maybe critiques, if you will, um, of the Epic Flash Sub Zero, and clearly they've, you know, made some adjustments to that, and the artificial intelligence has maybe contributed to that as well. All right. Well, let's see if we can beat those last three swings. Yeah. Let's give you the uh, speed zone here. All right, Cobra, speed zone. Okay. Back with that again. And pretty tight circle, the first three shots there. 
Yeah, really consistent. Pretty, pretty far, nice and consistent. Performed pretty well. That was a little mess it, but that's fine, right? Because yeah. I can probably take that one out if I keep best five or six. Yeah. Yeah, Hit. that one, again, another little kind of spinnier, maybe you miss hit that a little bit. Um, but that's still, a, I mean, that's a really, really good miss. <laughs> yeah, for a miss, I mean, I can't, I mean, that had two feet of curve to the left. Yeah. So that was two feet of curve. <laughs> that was dead straight. So I know I didn't yeah. quite catch that one as solid. It's probably the outlier of those six shots that I hit. Yeah. But can't complain how straight right. that was. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Yep. All right, well, let's wrap up here with Sim. Okay. All right, Taylor made Sim. Did a couple out to the right last time, but I think it was your farthest, you know, series of shots so far with his lowest spin. So we'll see how things continue, that trend continues, or maybe things change here. That's uh, nine good swings there. Why don't we uh, you take a look at the data here and you can give your fitter perspective on uh, the three new models here. All right, sounds like a good plan. All right, so Drew, let's dive into the numbers a little bit deeper. Um, on the right, you'll see here, these are the five of six shots. So I took out those, that one outlier per club that was okay. up there. So dispersion, that was the differences between them, them all there. Uh, obviously, you'll notice that the Cobra Speed Zone did fly the straightest out yeah. of them all. You'll notice also the Maverick Sub-Zero. I was able to turn over just a little bit easier as mm -hmm. well. And then you'll notice with the TaylorMade, I was just leaving it out to the right just a little bit there yeah. too. So. Yeah, and you know, we did recently put together a, a TaylorMade test kind of comparing Sim Family and the M Family. And you know, when you did hit the TaylorMade Sim there, you also had a little bit uh, of a miss to the right there too, so that kind of that tendency matches up. Uh, yes. But yep. in terms of distance and club speed and everything, Taylor Made Sim was pretty solid in this test too. Yeah. So looking at the numbers, club speed, you will notice the Taylor Made Sim actually was the highest. Now we're talking minimal numbers oh, here. Yeah. We're talking <laughs> point point one mile an hour faster than the Maverick Sub Zero, but it technically was the fastest. So whether yep. that's the inertia, inertia generated doing its job, yeah. not sure. Obviously. We know my numbers normally around about 110 miles an hour for right. my club speed with a driver. People that view the videos have obviously seen me swing a lot of drivers by now, so they know I'm about 110, 165 mm -hmm. kind of guy. Yep. Um, ball speed, all three of them, one six, you know, separated by 0.2. Mm -hmm. So they're all pretty consistent there. Um, especially good because ball speed and smash factor were very efficient. 1.50 yeah. with each one of them there. So. I was hitting them all very, very well. Yep. Um, if we look, go across here, what's interesting, I did notice that the sim did spin just slightly less. 1937 was the average spin. Yep. Uh, didn't quite stay in the air as long, so you'll notice the carry distance was just, just a little bit lower with mm -hmm. regards to distance with the, with the sim there. Um, the speed zone had the highest spin at about 2400 RPMs. And we're talking still exceptionally good spin numbers there yeah. to be able to control the ball flight. I'm not surprised that the ball did fly a little bit straighter with that club because this, it was spinning just a little bit easier. So it's a little yeah. bit easier to control. Maverick Sub-Zero about you know, 2,100, 2,000 RPM. So, so kind of optimal there too. Yeah. Um, both the Speed Zone and the Maverick Sub-Zero were flying 284 yards in the air. So good carry distances with those mm -hmm. two. I was very, very happy with, with those two there. Yep. Um, I mentioned that the sim was just flying a little bit lower, so you'll notice it was kind yep. of 90 feet in the air versus my traditional about 100 kind of feet in the air. Um, speed zone was just flying slightly higher because it was spinning just slightly mm -hmm. more. Uh, once again, it was flying straighter because it was a little easier to control. Um, go across here. 
wanted to mention just the curve that I noticed with, with the clubs. You'll notice the Maverick because I had, you know, three or four that I was able to draw right here. You'll notice yeah. the average curve was basically dead square. And yep. you'll notice the total feet, this is five feet of left to right curve. So not much at all. Um, the speed zone, it was about 26 feet of curve. The tailor made sim with me leaving it out to the right a little bit. I was having a harder time squaring that, squaring that club face up with this club. It was about 80 feet of curve left to right. So it's, it's a quite significant amount there. Yeah. Um, you notice the consistency of the curve right here. So plus or minus 12, the speed zone. So it was very consistent, very straight, very consistent. So I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, the speed zone was, I mean, I mean, look at the, just look at the circles. You can tell kind of the difference there. And then obviously with the Maver the advantage with the Maverick speed uh, Sub-Zero was that you kind of turned that over a little bit and that gave you a little bit extra distance as well. What's interesting with the Sub-Zero was, if you look at these white dots right here, I've got this one that's a little bit shorter. Notice how that was probably consistently yeah. going kind of the furthest of those four shots right yeah. there. And then with the speed zone, you've got kind of these four dots that were basically on the line almost there, kind of yeah. five yards each way. So maybe a little bit more distance with the Maverick in general, um, but straighter. Mm -hmm. Uh, straighter with the speed zone was what I kind of noticed there. And then just, I just struggled a little bit with the tailor made. It was still going the same distance. I was just leaving it a little bit out to the right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, again, these are three great options for golfers in 2020. Uh, obviously, as you can see by the, the, the data here from Thomas, uh, terrific ball speed, um, terrific dispersions as well, especially when you look at the Cobra and the, and the Callaway here in Thomas's test. But as always, um, these things are going to perform differently for every golfer out there. So that means getting fit and making sure the equipment is right for your swing is paramount. And so getting to a second swing store, talking with our online fitting team, whatever the case may be, is a great way to make sure that your equipment for 2020 is set up, ready for your swing and to help you uh, lower your scores. So Thomas, thanks for hitting some tee shots today. Some great information on the new 2020 drivers.